Shane Walton here with the University of Ultrasonics in Houston. Um, as most of you are aware, Evident recently came out with uh, software update 5.10 for the OmniScan X3. And uh, with that, uh, we see a lot of new advancements and a lot of new features to the instrument. Uh, the one that I'm the most excited about is phase coherence imaging for TFM. Uh, we abbreviate that PCI. Um, you're going to hear a lot more information about PCI uh, pretty soon. Uh, I will be adding that to my TFM course. So my next class, I think, starts in three weeks and, and phase coherence is going to be a part of it. Uh, but a week or so ago, um, I uh, put a probe on uh, this component here. So this is a three inch thick piece of a carbon steel or chrome molly uh, vessel. This was cut out when the vessel was retired some years ago. And this thing is littered with HTHA damage. Um, so uh, I, I ran a few tests with phase array and uh, conventional TFM and also uh, phase coherence. And I wanted to show those details to you. So uh, stick around and let's level up those UT skills. Okay, so the first setup that I wanted to look at, um, I built a just a basic linear at zero scan uh, with a 5L64A2 transducer. Um, I'm running contact because this part thickness is so thick, three inches. Uh, um, with my standard zero degree wedge, I would have got a multiple and I don't have any of the, uh, the really small wedges to uh, uh, get that interface out of my screen. So I'm just running contact. I wouldn't do this in the field usually, but uh, I'm in a pretty controlled environment here. So um, the linear scan, when we first put it on here, uh, let me actually hop over to full screen. So this linear scan, I'm scanning around and, and there's damage all throughout this part. Um, this linear scan, I'm using 20 elements per VPA. So my overall window, uh, if we think about, you know, from left uh, to, to right, right here. This is only about one inch, so everything seems a little bit stretched horizontally. And these, these indications, they almost look laminar. This kind of reminds me of uh, uh, some hydrogen blistering or something when I first look at it. Uh, but I'm kind of scanning around, and obviously I can see the defects. Um, I've adjusted my gain to get the back wall signal to about 100% screen, and, 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 and I'm able to see the defects, but they don't really pop, and they look, you know, they're there, but they look kind of stretched out and flat. So in addition to this setup, uh, I also made a, uh, a negative 30 to positive 30 longitudinal wave sectorial, and I'm, I'm just looking at the same part. So you can see the part thickness down there at three inches. You can see there's a bit of a transition uh, geometry taper there, but uh, there's the edge of the part. Um, again, you can see the indications. Some of them are bigger and brighter than other ones. And, uh, you know, it kind of varies uh, the quality. Uh, now, as you go up top here near the, uh, the OD surface, there's a lot of surface noise and uh, there's a lot of things that just get in the way. And um, if I put this in a two group setup, you can kind of see the, the similarities and the differences between the signals. So for both groups, the back wall is uh, roughly around 100% of screen, give or take, maybe a little bit more. Uh, but I did that so we could actually see these indications. And uh, that's what we see with conventional phased array. And uh, give me a second, and we're going to switch over to TFM, and uh, we're going to see how that looks. So uh, now we're looking at the same component with TFM. So uh, I've got the 5L64 probe, and I'm doing an LL imaging path. And, and you can see there's damage everywhere. Um, I may have to crank the gain up to really, to really uh, make it more visible. So there's some bigger areas of indication, and then you can see that concentration of that micro damage, the really small stuff. And um, uh, there's also a lot of surface noise involved here. So my signal to noise ratio for a lot of these small indications uh, isn't that great. There is a lot of background noise, uh, but you know I could scan this and I could do a relatively uh, reasonable job. Uh, there, there's some things that are going to go up towards the top that I might be a little blind to. Uh, this noise level is pretty strong. And again, if I really want to see the indications, I've got to blast uh, the gain or the voltage. And, and that's also going to turn up the noise. So 
An alternative to this is going to be the phase coherence imaging. And uh, I'm just going to go here in my TFM settings and I'm going to turn that on. Um, it's going to take a second for it to uh, kick in. But when it does, you're going to see a noticeable difference. So look at that. There's hardly any noise uh, even going all the way up to the top of my screen. I'm able to really pick these indications out from the background noise and, and maybe even from any grain structure. Uh, the signal to noise ratio that you're going to get with PCI is going to be something that was previously unattainable with uh, traditional phased array and, and now, you know, even what we're going to have to call conventional TFM. So, so this thing is uh, just littered up with indications. And as far as our noise level goes, uh, uh, if I were to set a set of cursors here, and put them kind of up top where a lot of that noise was before. Um, uh, amplitudes here uh, are not really based on summing up uh, uh, amplitudes at a particular location, at a, a particular grid point or a particular pixel location. The, the, the amplitudes that you really see here is going to be a level of coherence. So overall on my image, I've got what's called a maximum coherence of, you know, anywhere from 70 to 80%, depending on exactly where I am in this part. And that's basically going to tell me that I've got more phases that are uh, uh, lining up with each other. Uh, but in this box, as you can see, I made a zone box up here in what used to be a really noisy area, and I'm only getting a coherence of about 20%. So the less coherence you get and your, your noise that you see, usually will not have much of a phase coherence versus the coherence that you get from the rest of the flaws within this image. Uh, you can see the signal to noise ratio is just through the roof. Uh, phase coherence is going to be a game changer for looking at any of these small uh, damage mechanisms like this. Uh, the amplitudes you see here, the color, it's not based on gain. You, you see the gains actually, you can't adjust it. The only thing you could really adjust would be uh, your color palette. So if you wanted to bring more out of the top end or if you wanted to clean up the bottom end a little bit. Um, uh, phase coherence, I mean, look, there's hardly any surface noise at the top. I can plainly see uh, any of my indications that I would be interested in here. So like I said, this thing is just littered from, from top to bottom just about uh, with indications. And uh, I think that kind of says it all. So uh, this was just a quick little test, but uh, if you can think of any of your inspections where you're looking at very small damage mechanisms, HTHA, HIC, uh, very small tight cracking, um, hell, even porosity on a regular weld. Just think about porosity. You usually have to turn the gain way up to really make out the individual pores. When you do that, uh, you blow out the, the geometric signals and everything else. So uh, that'll be my, my next video probably. We'll look at some cracks and we'll look at some porosity with phase coherence. Uh, but I do think it is going to be a game changer um, for looking at small micro indications where usually the signal to noise ratio um, uh, is a barrier to your uh, quality of your imaging. I think phase coherence is going to help us overcome that. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoy uh, uh, using the new technique. And I can't wait to see what the industry comes up with. Uh, so take care and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.